balls. I mean, let's uh, kick the ball, make the ball rolling. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, um, as usual, I'll do an introduction. Welcome. Thank you very much for spending your time with us this evening once again. My name is Hui Ying. And uh, together with me is Andrew and Kumi. You can see their names at the bottom of the their, their, and their also pay camera. In. Yeah, and, and Pei is our assistant. She's helping us with all the background things. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about emeralds, the definition of green gemstones. Cool. So Kumi and I, we are the co-founders of the Gem Museum. We graduate with the Gem A F G A. I think some of uh, our um, audiences here are also FGA or GIA, GG, like Andrew. So I'll leave Andrew to introduce himself later on. So for those who are new, I see some new names actually. Anyway, we are actually part of Far East Gems Group. So what, what do we do? We have a gem testing lab where we have advanced te gem, te gem testing equipment like FTIR. So this is the FTIR and then the EDXRF. We have it here as well. And this is the UVVs, okay? So these are our gem testing equipment, some of the advanced testing equipment. And we have the institute. The gem museum is actually an in, 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 initiative of the gem institute. Okay, so why I founded the gem museum was because I saw that at the institute, we actually have a lot of hidden gems, literally hidden. Okay, they are all packed in boxes and in cabinets. <laughs> so wow, those, so sometimes I see them. And then one, one day I just thought, why not we just take out everything and display to people, you know, if we can't bear to sell any piece. So we might as well just display and, and show people and educate people. After all, that's what we do as an institute. Okay, so we run different courses like even this uh, certified diamond grader program that's from HRD and Dort. We um, invite the teacher from HRD to come to Singapore as well as uh, to bring in their equipment and so on and so forth. And of course, Kuming is uh, in, uh, in charge of Forest Gems and Jewelry, where we do uh, um, fine jewelry pieces, uh, finished products, and also buy and sell gemstones, rocks and minerals. Okay, so this is uh, Kuming's um, expertise. All right. And finally, we have the Gem Museum, where we educate the mass public, the general public on gems, rocks and minerals. Okay, so we are really looking forward to reopening our museum. Right now, we, um, we are still closed, but uh, we are planning. We are planning to reopen the museum and bringing to you a different museum experience. Okay, now that we are online and everything, we are hoping to do like both physical and online all at one time. So give us some time. Thank you very much once again for joining us. So without further ado, I will pass this time to Andrew. So welcome guys to yet again another the Gem Museum Zooming to Gems webinar. And this week we're gonna talk about the emerald, the definition of green gemstones. All right, so uh, for those who are first timers, um, okay, my name is Andrew Neal. Um, I'm a graduate gemologist from GIA and I work for Kuming and Huing at the museum as the curator. So in this webinar, we're gonna talk about the, some of the history of Emerald, um, the facts and some of the stories of Emerald as well. So I hope you like history because um, I used to hate history, but as for gemstones, the history of gemstones is just so rich and so eventful, you know, um, because they are just, they are being used for a long, long time as a gemstone. So without further ado, let's begin my slide. So everyone knows um, what emerald is, right? And without doubt, emerald is one of the most recognizable and treasured gemstone um, in the world. Um, and right now, in the modern era, um, jewelries with top quality fine emeralds um, can fetch high figures in the auction, in the auctions due to its um, top quality and rarity factor. And of course, it's very high demand for top quality emerald as well. So on the contrary, throughout history, it's, um, it is many ancient civilization actually looked upon emerald as a symbol of royalty and status 
And some in civilization even share the same mythology of emerald as well. So in history, the earliest mention of emerald was in fact in the Bible. So in the Bible, the chapter of Exodus, the time period for the Exodus chapter was estimated around like um, 13th century BC. So it's almost like 3,500 years ago. So it was then when, when the high priest of the Israelites wore a breastplate with 12 different gemstones. And of course, among them is the emerald. So emerald continued to popularize um, throughout the, the civilization from the Greek to the Romans. As you can see, one piece of, this piece of imperial Roman emerald necklace where they use um, rough emerald crystals. Um, they were just um, beat, make it into a bead and uh, with, set with gold settings as well, um, dating back to the first and second AD. So what the Greek and Roman think of emerald is they, they would think of, think of emerald as if it is the gemstone of the, the goddess Venus. So the planet Venus, uh, the goddess Venus is in the planet Venus, so, so on and so forth. And so, and even an uh, ancient, a Roman scholar even wrote, um, dedicating the green of the emerald. Um, he actually quoted, um, no, no color, no appearance is, is more soothing than the emerald. And also quote, um, strained eyes can be restored and refreshed just by gazing at an emerald. So this proved that uh, ancient Romans, they really love their emerald. And for me, I think it's true because I love green as well. Every time I work too much, I would just look at something green, like the trees or, or the plains or the grass field, you know, it just suits your eyes. So elsewhere in Egypt, it is in fact the earliest known of emerald source, right? The Egyptians have been mining from one of their emerald mountains for uh, since the 500 BC, right? So the famous queen of Egypt back then, the Cleo, uh, Queen Cleopatra, um, actually became, I would not say obsessed, uh, she, she just loved emerald, right? And people always say emerald is uh, one of the Cleopatra's favorite gems because to her, it actually symbolizes wealth and power because she will always brandish emerald jewelries to, to visitors, to foreign dignitaries. And also it will, she will also present gifts to the foreign dignitaries as well, um, consist of emerald jewelries. Whereas to the general population of Egypt, um, emerald actually symbolizes fertility and immortality because they believe in rebirth and moving on to the next life. So here is one of the example of the emerald jewelries from Egypt. It looks very similar to the Roman because both of them, they are almost at the same age. Um, whereas this piece, however, they have more gold um, beads and a pair of amethysts with a centerpiece of rock crystal quartz. So, yes, emerald, um, Egypt was one, one of the major uh, emerald source back then. Um, that was until the Spanish conquistador discovered the new world in the 16th century. So the new world consists of um, Central and South America, particularly uh, Colombia, right? So when they first got there, they have, they're already noticing um, the indigenous people had already been mining for emeralds in a in few other places in Colombia, Muzo, uh, Chivor, and Cosquez. So these are the places were full of emeralds. And the Spanish actually got mesmerized by the green, the fine quality of the Muzo emerald. 
they actually eventually they mine began mining on their own right so and eventually they would send fleets of like spoils emerald jewelries um, gold metal precious metal even food back to europe um, to their home country spain for for their king or for their people so when all of the jewelries emerald jewelries got back to europe the word of fine quality emerald spreads quickly throughout europe all right and soon later to asia as well so that is that is why the spanish conquistador played a big part in globalizing the colombian emeralds so this is these two pictures right here is the exact jewelries from the spanish from the spaniards right it, it, this too is actually retrieved from a famous Spanish shipwreck um, in the 17th century off the coast of Florida that contains dozens of Muzo emerald jewelries. Not just jewelries, there are many other precious metal um, jewelries as well. And some of the experts say, um, estimate the total treasure in the shipwreck was over 400 million US dollars. And you can see how fine the Colombian emerald pair with gold settings and vintage design as well in a cross set in 18 and 22 karat gold. So it's just amazing, you see. It's totally priceless for from of the Spanish jewelries. So once the word got to Asia, around the same time over there um, in, in the 17th century, okay, word spreads to India. Okay, when it reaches to an Islamic empire that controlled most of ancient India, um, an empire known as the Mughal or Mughal. And they were so charmed by this Colombian emerald, they actually um, ordered some from the Spaniards, right? They ordered some um, and eventually they created one of the most legendary emerald pieces of all time. The, and this is it, the Mogul Mughal emerald. So this piece is 217.8 uh, car carats with Islamic and floral carvings on each side of the tablet. So the Islamic carving is actually a, a, a prayer text in Arabic alphabets, whereas the other side is uh, patterns of floral and flower carvings. So the dimension of this tablet is, uh, I will not say huge, it's around like five, five times four times four in centimeters. So it's around like this, I would say, in length. And this piece right here, um, you, if you often visit Qatar, you can see it in the Museum of Islamic Arts in Doha, Qatar. So, it, and this piece was actually sold in 2002 for 2.2 billion. So the, the historical value of this stone makes it, makes the price to just shoot up, you see. It's not that big, but the carving itself is just one of a kind. So there are many historical emerald pieces out there, right? And some of the notable historical pieces is this. This is uh, called the Emerald Unguen Tarium. Okay, it's also during the time of the Spaniards and the Mughal Empire, where the king of Australia, uh, sorry, the then king of Austria ordered the crystal from the Spaniards as well. So he intended to make this into a vessel. So same goes to the name, it means vessel in Greek or Roman. And this crystal is actually is a whopping almost 3,000 carats in size. And in fact, it's a natural integral twin emerald crystal altogether. So what, he, what the king did to this um, emerald is he created a vessel actually meant for ointment storage, you see. So the dome right here that is surrounded by gold plates is actually can be opened, right? 
and for storage purposes. And the surrounding body of this vessel is carved with leaf patterns. There are actually a total of four leaves um, surrounding this body. And this lake right here is really cute as well. It's actually part of the, it's actually part of the original emerald crystal as well. So I just wonder if this lake sticking out is something added on later. Um, but it's not. It's the original emerald crystal altogether. So emerald, yes, is a widely known stone um, and is part of the barrel family that have many varieties of gemstones like the aquamarine, morganite, heliodor. And the emerald, however, is the most famous member of the family. So for those who have lots of siblings, I'm sure you know someone is always favored by the parents. So the aquamarine are surely jealous of the emerald, right? So if, as, as a matter of fact, uh, beryl is a uh, beryllium aluminum silicate, um, the chemical um, composition of beryl. As for emerald is, is colored by trace elements of chromium and vanadium. So more trace elements, it will give more vivid coloration to the stone altogether. And as for emerald, unlike the other varieties of beryl, emerald is a type three gem, okay? Which means almost all emeralds con would contain inclusions or surface reaching fracture. Type three is always, almost always have inclusions, whereas aquamarine, they are type one, they are usually eye clean and free of inclusions. So what happened to those um, large amount of inclusions or these surface reaching fractures would actually give a mossy like appearance to the emerald. Um, also described as garden, right? Um, as for me as a gemologist, I always please to see this mossy appearance because I always tell visitors and customers that it can be evidence of its nature. Um, because why would I say so? It's because syn synthetic emeralds tends to be really clean and almost, almost as if it's too good to be true kind of clean, you see? So a garden is not always bad. Um, although I heard some cases that synthetic emeralds can be, can be mossy appearance um, by, by human intervention. So that means the garden is artificially made, but it, for, as an, for an expert, it's really easy to point out the difference from a natural inclusion than an artificial inclusion. So um, no worries about that. And, so the origin, the best quality of emerald still comes from Colombia. Um, they are still producing the best quality of emerald in terms of the size and the color in intensity. So, so pure hue, the pure green hue of the emerald, uh, moderate tone, uh, vivid saturation are actually no match um, compared to other sources. Um, although there are many other sources that emerge, such as Brazil, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, um, yeah, there's still no match for the Colombian emerald. It's still the best. So as for the garden, the inclusions um, as con is concerned, emerald it actually gets a special treatment because Unlike other gemstones, emerald is never heat treated, right? It's never heat, treat, heat treated for, um, for the color improvement or the clarity improvement as well. Instead, they are oiled for their clarity and structural stability. So this is a before and after photo of an emerald being, before being oiled and after being oiled. So what you can see is all the inclusions, the fractures, the fissures that appeared white. And after oiling, you just, just look, you can just see through the stone. 
So oiling, depending on, um, so oiling, because due to the fractures and the common nature of the fracture in emerald, oiling of emerald has become a common practice, okay? It's, it's a common practice for, for the emerald producers and in the trade as well. So depending on the policies of the, the, the miners and the trade, the miners, sorry, the miners, they would depend, they would use natural or synthetic substances such as uh, natural cedarwood oil or Canada balsam resin, and whereas synthetic uh, substances such as optical resin. So for those uh, traditional miners, such as the miners in Colombia, the Muzo, they would highly prefer the natural oil, such as the cedarwood oil. Whereas the larger operators and the modern ones, they would opt for the Opticon resin. Why so? Because they think the synthetic resin would last longer compared to the natural ones, um, because the natural ones, over time, it tends to leave a brown stain Although the brown stain can be, the, the old oil, in fact, can be removed and replaced easily, um, but is, that's just their choice of the, the oil usage. So this is an example of the oiling de device. It's a small device, it's not that big. So the chamber is right here, you, that you will put the emerald and the oil inside it. So after the lid is closed, they will turn on the vacuum for the oil to sip into the emerald slowly but surely. And for a few hours, the oil will become hardened and, and stays in the emerald. So some for oiling of emerald, it's actually beneficial to the stone. Like I said before, it strengthens the structure. Cut, uh, to prevent the fractures and chipping of the emerald that caused by the fissure, the amounts of fissure inside the stone. It improves its clarity by removing air pockets that, that, that is trapped inside the fissure. And sometimes it also improves its overall color. When, why so? Because once those air pockets are removed, are replaced by oil, it allows a smooth passage for the light to enter and exit the stone. So it creates a clearer overall um, body color to the emerald. So it doesn't, so those, so those uh, inclusions will not interrupt the, the, the light. So creating this whitish look inside the emerald. So the only thing about oiling is that you have to be careful uh, when you send it for repair because um, the heat from the bench jeweler torch will actually sweat out the oil from the emerald. So um, it is wise to tell the, the repair, repairman to, about the treatments that your emerald that underwent. But I am sure that all of the bench jeweler will have a basic understanding about emerald and the oiling treatments it receive. And, so there will, there will not be any fuss about that as well. Um, they just trust, just go for a trusted repair store to fix your emerald ring, right? So another condition for oiling is the oil, the colorless oil must not be dyed or colored. So it must be colorless. It does not, that will not affect the overall body tone of the emerald. So as emerald as a valuable gemstone, people will have the tendency to use treatments to, on other gemstones to imitate, to imitate emerald just to gain maybe profit or publicity. And so it happens to this stone right here, the Theodora emerald, also known as the, or not translated as the gift of God, okay? Is a massive 11.5 kilograms of Brazilian barrel. 
So the story goes when the owner of this piece sent it to to an auction house to be auctioned. Okay. Naturally, in an auction, it would attract attract many attention, right, of the public and expert altogether. So um, filled with skepticism, the experts and gemologists went to investigate this stone, and eventually they had spotted the river of dye inside this stone. So in gemological term, the dye, a dye stone will will be will show a river of dye. So it, that's why I'm saying before, it's easy to spot a natural inclusion than a, 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 a artificially made one. So in this case, however, gemologists say it is dye, so they will not call it an emerald. Instead, they will call it a barrel with zones of emerald. So what happened during the auction is, fortunately, nobody bought this stone. Okay. And right after this auction, the owner of the stone was arrested for fraud. So that is why um, deceiving people is not a good thing. You will get caught eventually. All right. So after all of those history and facts, why does emerald define green in gemstone? All right. So I have listed down a three, few factors. Okay. First of all, is emerald is a beloved green gem. Um, people love them because of its color intensity. Um, and the color can range from pure green to bluish green or yellowish green. So if you see these tree stone, they show a different colors, okay? The right stone shows yellowish green. The left stone shows um, slightly bluish green. And the middle one is slightly pure green, okay? Although I can see a little bit of blue in it as well. So the color intensity of the emerald is actually unmatched by any other gemstones. Although some of you may heard of Savrite Garnet, it is a green gemstone that looks very similar to emerald as well. So you might think that, okay, Savrite can, can, can match the emerald green. And some might say it's even better than emerald. So that leads me to my second point, the value. So emerald, the, the value of Savrite is nowhere near emerald right now, okay? Because emerald is the green of the big tree colored stone that consists of sapphire, ruby, and emerald. So this big tree generates more economic movement than all other color stones combined, you see? So this amazing piece right here, why I chose this big picture, okay? Uh, the Beaumont necklace is because I personally have the privilege to see this stone, um, sorry, this necklace for myself. It was sold at US uh, 3.5 million US dollars. Uh, in the month of my graduation in GIA in London. So before that, there were auction houses like Sotheby, Christie's, and Bonhams. They were actually open uh, a public viewing for the items that are to be auctioned. So me and my classmate actually went to Sotheby, see the stone firsthand, and the staff would actually explain all these emeralds from Colombia are unoiled, untreated. In fact, one of the cert certificates for the emerald also stated the emeralds are unoiled. That means no oil treatments has been introduced to this emerald. It, told, it has 11 pieces of um, Colombian emerald, a sugarloaf cut. So a stone this big, you will tend to see inclusions, correct? But when I see this necklace, by myself, me and my classmate are all surprised because it's just so clean, you know? And the sugarloaf, you can just straight, see straight through the stone and we can barely find any inclusions at all, okay? And another amazing thing about this necklace is this necklace is detachable in the middle. Here is the detach, 
and it can become a diamond bracelet by itself. And I'm sure they, I'm not sure this piece can be a bracelet by itself because I would think that it would be too valuable to be a bracelet. So yeah, a total weight of 76.8 carats. And if you notice, the, the largest emerald here is more bluish compared to the rest of the emerald, right? Yeah, so that's uh, another priceless piece, uh, rich in history as well. Um, from, uh, he has uh, more than a few decades of history from a, a famous person in, in the 50s or 60s. So the last point that I'm going to point out is the color of green. Okay, the intensity of emerald has, has caused people to use the term emerald to name significant, many significant places or objects. So like in this picture, these two pictures that I've chosen, the Emerald Isle is a poetic name for Ireland. So Ireland by nature itself, it has this vast landscape green, you see, you just, Anywhere you look, it's just plains of green, greeneries, you see. So how I wish I could go to Ireland one day and see the green for myself, okay? Another item is the Emerald Buddha of Thailand. This item is considered one of the most religious um, item in Thailand. So you might think this emerald, uh, is this emerald? Um, in fact, this is not, emerald okay it is carved from green jasper yeah they just use the the word emerald to describe the green for the carvings so as a conclusion to recap all of the information that i've given um i would just want to point out virtually all emeralds are treated so anywhere you go it's always safe to assume that emeralds are always oiled, you see. No harm is done to the emerald, it's just being treated for their stability and um, the color improvement as well. So nevertheless, it is still one of the most highly sought, highly valued and sought after gemstone. And for, as I always have this um, story of my own, um, for me personally, I love green. I love gemstone. And I always share my passion to my girlfriend, right? Okay. Um, and I always tease her about having green stuff, like green clothes, uh, green shoes. And one day I come up with an idea of, um, uh, I, I asked her, what if I, I proposed you with an emerald ring? <laughs> what would you say? So she gave me a death stare and said, no. <laughs> so I was like, what? Okay, so emerald ring, emerald proposal ring is out of the option for me. So for you, for you guys, it is still a good choice for, as a gift for your wife or your husband. So you see, so that concludes my slides. I hope you like the history, the facts and the stories and over back to you, Kuying and Kuming. I didn't know that you like green so much. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, I thought you were going to propose over webinar Zoom, a Zoom yeah. webinar. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day, maybe one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we'll gather all our our visitors and audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, uh, our participants here must support. Okay, when Andrew want to do proposal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll do. Uh, you know, we will we will arrange and organize. So anyway, yeah. Uh, please feel free to put your questions in that and click that Q and A button and ask your questions. Okay. I think it's a very interesting presentation about like the history of. Uh, uh, emerald, a little bit of history. Rarely we list, we hear about the history. A lot of times we hear about um, uh, the you know from the auction houses and all that. We hear about the history of unique pieces 
but the gem itself is not so uh, common. So in any case, while you have your questions, uh, while, while we wait for your questions uh, on the Q&A section, let me just let you know what is coming up next. As Kuming mentioned at the beginning, um, he is going, uh, his father actually, this Mr. Tay is not him, this Mr. Tay is his father. <laughs> okay, so um, Mr. Tay, Kuming's father, he's going to give a presentation, a webinar on next Friday. Okay, next Friday uh, on the topic of diamonds from Kalimantan. So I think it's very interesting. I've seen the slides. Once again, he always had very interesting um, presentation. And of course, for the rest of the topics for Zooming into Gems series for this month will be on Felspar. We're talking about the phenomena of Felspar like Moonstone, Sunstone, Labradora, and so on and so forth, as well as Opals and also Peridot. Recently, I have a lot of people asking about Peridot, so I think that will be quite interesting. So feel free to uh, browse through the events and also the courses that we had at this page on uh, firesgemsinstitute.eventbrite.com or the gemmuseum.eventbrite.com. Okay, and uh, last but not least, of course, I still need to mention some of you, I, I saw your name and I think you have dropped by our shop already and you have inquired some of the things. So thank you very much for your support. So this is the discount of, for the moving out sale. And of course, if you have not joined our Facebook group page, please feel free to scan the QR code right there, okay? At the top right, top left-hand corner, scan the QR code and join our Facebook group page. So we will post up like different things, different uh, gem rock minerals, uh, gemstones, even some uh, fine jewelry pieces uh, to, for everybody. Of course, we say it's for sale, but then the thing is that uh, Andrew is going to also put in some of his comments about some of the interesting facts about gemstones, about the different type of gems. So he has already put up on some, some posts like the Mandarin Garnet. So Mandarin Garnet is something quite interesting as well. So, um, right. And uh, of course, Q&A, we see some questions right there. So, uh, I'm sorry, am I supposed to put Q&A first or Kuming first? I forgot. Uh, I thought it's uh, Kuming first. Kuming first, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, pass this on to Kuming. Kuming is going to do some demonstration as per our zooming into gems. We're going to zoom into some gems. So just now we had a nice time with uh, Andrew. So now you have a nice time with me. And uh, Andrew, you, you have to look because I'm going to show you some beautiful emerald rings, okay? That you can show your girlfriend. So if you wow. can, you ask her to come and uh, take a look. So that, uh, because the conception is this, when you see emeralds, you, you don't really see uh, the nice quality. Then people get an idea that it's very ugly, you know? So grassy, so much grass. I don't want to have so many grass growing on my hand, you know. I, I, I don't want a garden on my hand. And, and people's idea is that, yes, because of the quality. From emeralds, uh, you have a range of quality. From a, a lower quality, we have stones for even, I think, $50 a carat or even $10 a carat, all the way to $100,000 a carat. So these are some things uh, tonight I want to bring you through a journey. Okay, so if you are excited, just uh, type in there, journey, all right? Let's go. So, I will share you mean, screen. You mean type in the chat, is it? Yeah, type in the chat. Journey, let's okay, go on a journey. Now you can type in the chat. Journey. Journey. Journey with me. To, to the all land. panelists and attendees. Okay. Right. It's so fun. Wow, look at that. Okay. So you can see two, two rings. Can you all see my screen? Got, got it, huh? Okay, so we have for here. Uh, yes, very nice. On the, on the left hand side is an emerald, a beautiful emerald ring, most likely from Afghanistan. Very clear. So just now, uh, Andrew, you, you were talking about a nice stone. So uh, this is a very well set uh, piece of jewelry. Uh, is is uh, you can see. Look at the color, and also the quality. Very clear, all right? So I'm going to show you an overview of the stones. Whoa, thank goodness it's in the light box. Okay, and nice diamonds all around it. All right, so look at that quality. When you look at emeralds, um, the moment is very clear. 
uh, the value increases by a lot. But actually, if you look clearly, there's actually a inclusion at the this this. You no, know, it's not inclusion. It's oh yeah, it's a fat. It's like a feather. Can you see here online? Okay, later we'll put it under the microscope and we can take a further look. Yeah. Okay. So this is Afghanistan, and then this is Zambia. This is from Zambia. Okay, you can see color is a bit different. The quality in terms of the clarity, this one is a lower clarity compared to this. You see the difference? Okay, but I'm already showing you pretty good high quality stones. Later on, I'll show you some uh, lower quality ones. Yeah. So when you look at uh, emeralds, like what uh, Andrew said, they are type 3. So they virtually have inclusions. So do have some grace and uh, when you look at emeralds because the inclusions are part of the what makes the stone so special. Okay, it's very special. Okay, so you can see that the claw is a bit yellowish. Uh, reason why is because emeralds are very sensitive. Sometimes when I set the stone, when I get somebody to set the stone for me, uh, we don't plate it because we don't want to dip the emerald into the plating solution because plating solution is acidic and also is uh, is pretty hot so when you do that it might cause a uh, irregular expansion and contraction of the stone you know like anything that is uh, hot it will increase in expansion it will expand and then after that when you take out from the hot hot uh, plating solution Sometimes the practice is to use a hair dryer to dry the stone. So, or even some of it, they, they dip it in cold water. <laughs> so when you do that to an emerald, wow, you're going to break it. Yeah, so normally when I set my emeralds, I leave the plating. I, I leave out the plating. So you can see my claws are yellow. The other reason why we do this is also to enhance the color of the emerald. Because yellow and green, it makes, uh, it brings out the vividness, the saturation of the green color. All right, and the next piece of jewelry I want to show you is this. This is not emerald. <laughs> this is a piece of jadeite. Okay, some jadeite. And the cost of color is also the same as emerald, which is chromium. So you can see very similar look at the background and the foreground, you see. But the thing is this. Um, jadeite, this size, this quality is much more expensive than emerald of the same quality. Um, well, one of, maybe one of the reasons is also the rarity. Jadeite, 80% of the jade comes from only one country in the world, which is Myanmar. Whereas for emerald, you can find it from Colombia, Brazil, Africa, where else? Huh? Uh, Afghanistan, Egypt. There are many more producing countries for emerald. Yeah, so this is a emerald green jadeite jade. It's beautiful, beautiful color. All right, so I want to show you now some gemstones. Hang on, let me just show you some gemstones. Okay, let me show you a Colombian stone. Oh no, a, Brazil, a Brazilian stone. Okay, I show you here first. See this Brazilian? Okay, this is like a mid-range. The color is really nice green. Uh, it has some inclusions. Okay, this is the uh, out view. Now let's go into the microscope. The microscope. Ta -da! Check that out. <laughs> so cool, man. I really like to play with these gadgets. Okay, guys, uh, if you are motion sickness, close your eyes for five seconds because I'm going to adjust, you know. Okay, I don't want to cause you all to have any. Okay, so this is emerald. Let's go deeper into the stone. Make some sound effects. Ah, look at that. So you... Just now I thought to myself, if I show you directly the stone under the microscope, you'd be like, wow, what's this? Looks so, uh, cannot appreciate. Yeah, it's true. Because when I saw it just now for the first time, I was like, wow, it's so, so many inclusions, how to appreciate it. 
So I rather show you the outside first than the inside. So um, this is a typical Brazilian stone. You can see many crystals all over the stone. Okay, you can go to GIA's website. Let me new share. Okay, and uh, there is one slide here. Let me show you. So study inclusion is really very fun. There, here you go. So something like this. Okay, you can see that uh, three phase inclusions, but they're really very small and minute. Let me share back the one. Here, if you go in deeper into the stone, let me go. Okay, now I'm zooming into gems, literally, about 40 times. Let's go 40 times. 40 times. Uh, can you see my cursor? You see this? These are two phase inclusions here. Try to get it. Uh, come on. Uh, this is the best I can do. So you can see many crystal inclusions, all right, all around the stone. So one thing for sure is a natural stone, because when you have a synthetic stone, firstly you won't have so many crystals. You won't be so busy. You'll be very clear, very clean. All right. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Let's see what anybody have any question. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, this is a Brazilian stone, okay? To tell you, it's really fun. Uh, why emeralds are so fun is because if you have a microscope, you can spend hours just looking at each of the, of the inclusions. You can see some more two-phase inclusions here. You can see here, here. Yeah, and take photographs. We should have a photo. I think we are going to organize a photography competition soon for, for, for our gem museum. I've been thinking about it because I think it's so fun, you know, taking photos. But maybe not microscope photos uh, because not everybody has microscope like us. But uh, anyway, so you can see all the crystals all around. Okay. This is just an introduction. If you want to learn more, you can join our courses. Uh, at and come to Far East Gem Institute. So, uh, look at it like this. Very hard to appreciate. You have to go deeper, like 20 times, you know, to see the individual inclusions. Let's move on to another stone from Colombia. So now we take the plane to Colombia. Just the neighbor, you know, Brazil and Colombia is quite near each other. So this is what you, I'm going to show you. It's a Colombian emerald. You see that it's a bit lighter in color. All right, this kind of lighter color, uh, Colombian emerald, is characteristic of Colombian emeralds. It's a bit bluish green, you know. When you see something like that, most likely it's Colombian. So today you learn something new. Yeah. All right, look very clean, right? You see, this is like, uh, I would say 10 times, uh, yeah, some, no, five times magnification. You can see, very clear, right? So now let's go into the microscope. Just now when you see from the outside, you don't see many inclusions because this is, not, this is now 10 times magnification. I want to show you a very interesting inclusion that I saw in this stone. Okay, we are going to the deeper in the stone. Can you see, okay, let me, can you see this part? It's like a hexagonal growth. Let me go deeper. Can you see that? See, it's, I think it's a emerald crystal <laughs> because it's hexagonal. Can you see it's a mirrored image? So the 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 hexagonal crystal most likely is in between here because it's reflected by the facets. So an emerald within an emerald. How cool is that? You buy one stone, you get one more stone free, but the, the other stone is a micron size. Hey, this is a 0 0.86 carat emerald. So inclusion studies can tell you a lot about the stone. I mean, let's have a question to y'all. Do you want to see a faceted stone or a cabochon stone? 
Y'all can put in the chat. Do you want to see a faceted stone or a cabochon stone? Okay, the cabochon stone is about 80 carats and the faceted stone is 24 carats. Which one would you like to see? Some of them say faceted, some of them say both. Both. <laughs> both, okay. both. Most of them both. <laughs> okay, okay. I uh, think you better show both. Uh, you, you make them. Let me show <laughs> you. Let me show you the. I think it's 78 carat or 80 carats. Uh. It's set in a very beautiful piece of jewelry. Okay, first, when you show people jewelry, you have to show like teaser. You see? Very beautiful chain. You see the chain? The chain, the chain has very nice diamonds. Okay, you see, there's even diamonds, rose cut, this is called rose, rose cut diamonds. They're rose cut diamonds. Okay, and the stone. Look at that, this is a Colombian emerald. All right, so let me show you in the light box. This is a huge one. I can I can wear as a... You know, this is like a... No, don't, 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 yeah, please. <laughs> tiara, like, you know, whoa, the Persian ladies, okay? But no, this is a... Yeah, it looks like Jade Florence, yeah. So let me show you under the light box. Look at that. <laughs> so big. Oh. Very nice. Okay. Wow, wow. If you look the, at the... it... Yeah, I think the beauty of Emerald is that it has character. I, I kind of like some inclusions there. Wait, uh, let me... Oh, okay, I want to show you something interesting. I just found out. If you look clearly here, you can see the hexagonal growth. It's a very hexagonal growth of one crystal. Uh, Barrel is from the... You see this part? It's like one crystal of Emerald. It's hexagon. See, one side, two side. Three side, four side, and then some five and six side. You can see the hexagonal growth here. So it was an emerald growing within an emerald. Okay, this is about 76 carat. It's a Colombian emerald in a chain with diamonds. Yeah, very beautiful. All right, so are you ready to see the faceted stone? If you are ready, just type, I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Wow, very exciting, huh? I'm also very excited. <laughs> show you all the special gemstones from around the world. So again, I'm going to show you a Colombian stone, okay? Colombian stone. Wow, I see everybody is excited. So, let me show you from my face again. Wow, ready? Everybody is like, wow. Yeah, it's massive. But that quality is not say high quality that one because of the inclusions if you cut it into a into a faceted stone it will look like the the stone what do you call it the gift of god uh. how do you call it uh, andrew theodora emerald uh, theodora you know because yeah it's just big by in color so okay now this one dun, 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 dun. this is a very beautiful ring i shall show you Look at this ring, okay? I don't want to show you the, the emerald first. I'll show you the backside of the ring first. See? Ding, 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 ding. Okay, check this out. This is an emerald, 24 karat emerald from Colombia. Okay? The picture doesn't do justice, but uh, wow, wow, looks very beautiful. Show you on my finger. See? Very beautiful. Okay, now let's see under the iPad. So, why we are doing this uh, this webinar is to really inspire everyone. During, during this time of crisis, let's look to beautiful gems. And uh, they're, all, they're all created by, by nature, by God. And they're so beautiful. And yet, they're the, so small. You know, every, every piece of... Uh, every piece of... See, look at that. Wow, wow. We said if eight claws, this one and a half carat uh, trillion diamond at each side. And uh, so three carat of diamond with a 24 carat emerald. Beautiful color. And somehow or other, the color in the screen is a bit uh, bluish. The actual thing is really wow, strong, vivid color. Yes. Yeah. 
on the screen it's a little bit duller. Yeah. I think the, the actual stone is brighter. It's more vibrant. Look at that. Yeah, the actual stone is somewhere around that color. Yep. Maybe you brighten up at the might brighten up the iPad a little bit. Oh yeah, you can do yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. So you can see there are eight claws. So these are called eagle claw. Uh, why we do it two claws? Because if not, it's a giant one claw. It looks very big, very bulky. So it looks like it looks more fine. And uh, double claws is uh, very very secure. Mm. Uh, this stone is uh, from Colombia, and uh, it has been uh, clarity enhanced, meaning it has been oiled. And uh, it's uh, moderate oil. So there are three, there are a few tiers. So it's like minor, moderate, and extensive. There's also one which is uh, no, no oil, no indication of oiling. That's that's something that is, wow. So yeah, this is from Colombia. So, okay. So hope you all like it. Hope you enjoy yourself looking at this. Okay, so, coming. Um, yeah. Jenny asked, how much would this cost? Oh, this one, uh, this one is about 200,000, I think. Yeah, I think uh, so, 200,000. With the diamonds, yeah. with the diamonds on the side, the whole ring. This this is 200,000, my dear, my dear ring. And just now that piece, <laughs> just now the emerald, let me take it out again to show you the giant emerald from Colombia, something like this. Eh? Well, like best friends, eh? Okay. <laughs> the giant emerald is about uh, maybe 50,000. Yeah. 40, 40 plus, uh, 40 plus 50. Yeah, so you can see the difference. Uh. Although it's much bigger, but because of the clarity, uh, the value is lesser. But of course, you know, value, uh, the price can be anywhere. If you can put it into a very high-end jewelry shop, oh, the price will be much higher because frankly speaking, the value of gemstones is tremendous. The price is depending on the need. If there's a great need for it, the price is very high. If there's no need for it, that's why it's very low. So that's why sometimes when you go to the second-hand store, the, the pawn shop, when you give your stone, there's no need for them. You had the need, so you, you when they do that, the price goes down all the way. But when there's a need, when you need to buy something, when you need something beautiful, wow, the price goes up. So this is something that fluctuates. Whereas the value of the stone, it is always constant because it's tremendous. All the stones that you see right now, they are all millions of years to billions of years old. So just imagine that containing so much information is so vast that just now by just showing you through the microscope, you can see so many things and learn about it in that way. So in terms of value, yes. But market-wise, it will increase with knowledge. So one of the reasons why we like to talk about these stones is because when you appreciate them, then you understand the value. When you understand the value, you'll be like, wow, gemstones are really valuable. And they can, that is why people pass them down from generations to generations. I have one story which I'll end and then I can uh, continue to answer your questions. Only one question. Oh. Yeah, we answered okay. the rest. You can look oh. at the rest of the questions and see if you want to add on. Yeah, you can actually order the Emerald Oiling Machine. I think you can just do a Google search. There are people in America that sell it. Uh, yeah, you can even order from... Uh, yeah, I think America. You can get it from America. India, I think also should have because... You know, whatever technology they will have a similar version, especially in Jaipur. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think people. No, basically, it's cheaper yeah. to manufacture the the instrument, the equipment, uh, in India. So yeah. So most likely, chances that's, uh, are that they will have yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Manufacturer in India. Yes. So anyway, just now, um, this uh, Andrew was talking about uh, oiling do help strengthen the structure. So there are two, the oiling, one is really cedar oil, that's just liquid. But there's also paraffin wax, we call it like kind of oil. Uh, when, you, when you heat it up, it, it's liquid, but and it, when it keeps room temperature, it hardens. Yes, that actually strengthens the, the, the emerald. On the other hand, there's also this new synthetic uh, so-called Opticon, 
Opticon is a kind of resin that is a very, very strong, like a glue. So there's a lot of debate, you know, people say, oh, I'm, I'm an organic person. I want to be totally natural. But when it's just oil and liquid, it tends to dry up. So just now, uh, Florence asked a question of, oh, so time and time I need to treat my, my stones need to go for spa, is it? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, Emerald, if you, you can uh, spa them every once a year. But the thing is that uh, you need to send it to somebody that really knows how to do it. And the risk is, is high, you know, because first you've got to take out the stone from the setting, take out the stone, ship it to... I have, a, I have one of my partners, we do... We do oiling for emeralds in Israel. So, uh, I mean, if you all want to do it, we can do it for you. But just that it's the risk. So when you put it into the machine, when you do the oiling, there's a heat, it's hot, you know, and there's pressure. So the risk of sometimes something happening, that is, that is there. I wouldn't say it's not there. And But although everybody, we do it the best we can, we do it professionally, there's this kind of risk. That uh, I would say I would not like consumers to take that kind of risk. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm in this trade. We understand it. Uh, we do it as a profession. So we, we, we are understanding like, ah, uh, if something breaks, it's part of the whole deal. Yeah, that's why we can take it. But for, for customers, because it's sentimental, you know, when something sentimental is broken, you know, it's oh, very hard to, I, I mean, I personally don't like it lah, to, to do that. So that's why these are the risks involved in the gem trade. Yes. So, uh, any questions? Any more questions? Uh, how come? Yes, I think Victor asked the question in the chat. How common are clear emeralds? Is it? Uh, no, no. Uh, okay. uh, he asked in the chat. Do you oh, sell chat. these stones? <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, these are part of the collection of the King's Bespoke uh, brand that we have. We sell. Uh, we make a bespoke jewelry. And uh, yeah, so so they are for sale too. If you want, you can always private message us later on, and uh, we can we can set up an appointment for you to take a look. These samples that we have are, are very good samples to use to show people actually, because these are the things that is actually getting sold in the market. Mm. So um, like in the classroom, we have very uh, specific pieces just to show specific things like specific inclusion, tremor light, and all the different inclusions, feather and all this stuff. Yeah, so those those emeralds uh, tend not to be emeralds that you will see in the market because those in the market are also sorted out uh, beautiful ones. Then it will be sold, correct? So that's why uh, in, our, in our museum, we have the mind to market story. We tell you almost everything that we can. You know, from uh, rocks and minerals all the way to the fine pieces, fine jewelry pieces. So they can actually appreciate the value in a much uh, broader sense. Yeah. So in yeah. any case, some of these pieces are really for sale. So, um, but otherwise we also show it to people so that people can learn to appreciate and understand the value better. Okay, let yeah. me show, show one last. Uh, do you all want to still see some more stones? Everybody, are, are you all okay? You want to see some more stones? If you want to see some more stones, then just type in more stones. Yeah, so um oh, wow. while well, you to... prepared more stones, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let me answer Alitia's uh questions live. So her question is one question regarding millennial clientele, gemstone color preference. Was told their preference has been for lighter colored stones. Do you guys agree? Um it's possible they prefer the lighter colored stones. And that's because the lighter color stones are usually cheaper. So, um, and of course, the millennial uh, clientele, right, they are into mini minimalism. So, minimal minimalism tend to go for the pastel kind of a tone, a pastel kind of color. So, that's why uh, so-called their preference is lighter color stones. But in terms of quality, the lighter color stones cannot be compared to the strong vivid colors, the saturated ones. Yeah, and uh, quality is not dependent just on popularity. Quality is really also dependent on the rarity of the gem. So if let's say the color of the gem is saturated and that one is rare, you don't see it everywhere, it's not like all over in the market, that is rare, therefore the quality is also higher. So it's very highly tagged to how rare it is, how easily uh, you can find it in the mine or easily you can find it in the market as well. 
Okay, so um, uh, I cannot agree or disagree lah. It's just just the way it's a it preference. Is, you know, it's also price. Yeah, it's a preference. Mm. Yeah. Because so personally, <laughs> I think I'm still in the millennial uh, age. We are the last age. We are 37. <laughs> We are the last. We are the um, last. We are, at, we are the last the, year. We are at the end. Yeah, we are at the end of the millennial so I'm uh, generation. So I'm an old millennial. <laughs> well, I like the saturated color. After a while, after a while, when you see gems enough, right, you will realize that the light color still it doesn't give that kind of a uh, kick, you know. So yeah. I mean. So, okay. So that's, that's uh, the, let me yeah. just show you here. Okay, y'all can see the stones, right? So this is a light color emerald. Uh, this one has been cut in Israel. So the cutting is really very, very bright, very precise. So I guess in millennial sense, um, personality is something also that uh, they like to look at. So who is the cutter? You know, because let's say if you have a very high quality piece of rough, was, and then you get a, a renowned cutter to cut it, a special shape, sometimes very uh sayang how to say the english word very uh it's uh it's wasted, not wasted. not waste la, but it will cost a lot because you have to shave off a lot of the material to cut off some special cuts and then special cuts right you got to do trial and error sometimes to get the perfect cut so if you want to do a trial and error on a very high quality piece of material wow the value of the stone will just from a normal one let's say the stone cost two thousand dollar at the end of the day, it costs maybe 20000 to 30000 I mean, you can go and see some diamond cuts, the Tarkovsky cut, uh, which is by... Tarkovsky. No, you know, what's the brand name again? Uh, Tarkovsky. Yeah, there's a Tarkovsky cut, Mansell Tarkovsky. Uh, a 30 pointer, normally in the market, is like uh, maybe uh, six, seven, not $900. But if you buy a Tarkovsky cut one, it costs you easily $9,000. Or even twelve thousand dollars, yeah. And people do pay for that that kind of price because of the way it's cut. So anyway, I want to show you. Can y'all see? Can y'all tell me which one is the Zafirite garnet? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Or is it this one? Can y'all tell me which one is the Zafirite garnet? Which one? Zafirite garnet. First one on the okay, left. Some Anybody? Stay left, all the way to the left. First Top in the left piece. row, extreme left. First extreme wow, left. Wow! 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 All the answers are coming in, and uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, you're already very smart, ah. Uh. Wow! You all should give a pat on the back and say, "Well done." <laughs> yeah, you're right. So this is. Uh -oh. so, so as much as people say that you know, wow, Zabra Garnet looks like emerald yes it's green but it's different you know it's different it's like when you put me to us i'm a i'm a singaporean chinese you put me with a china chinese uh, you it, although we look the same uh, but with the moment you open the mouth on uh, the everybody tell know who is a singaporean <laughs> so for the stone it's the same thing you put it there you look at it wow all of you are experts okay let me just show you the zap right see let me try that it's yeah, the stone, green no? hue is a little bit different. Yeah, hey, this this Zabra is a nice Zabra, okay. This is like top quality, you know. Yeah, look at that. Very beautiful. Okay, and then uh, this is a Brazilian stone. I think just now I show you under the microscope. Okay. This one most likely is a Zambian. It's a 3.5 carat. So this is like very, uh, just this is not so garden. The one that is garden is the, the one the round stone the. Yeah, the round stone. Yeah, let me show you the round stone again. This one, this is like garden. See the garden look, see the garden look. Yeah. So now you know how to sound like a professional. Oh, your emerald looks like garden look. Ah, don't say Garden, botanical wow. gardens. So many inclusions. Okay, everybody, today <laughs> I teach you a new way to say, wow, it's such a garden, lush, luscious garden, you know. Wow, it's a beautiful, like Shangri-La, you know. Yeah, that's, Shangri -La. that's a, a nice way to talk, you know. Botanical gardens. 
Okay, and uh, luscious, luscious gardens. And last but not least, this emerald. Wow, this one is a 5.24 carat Colombian emerald. Colombian. See that? Very distinct, uh, don't you think, my friends? The color is Colombian color. Very yeah. distinct. Mm. So in emeralds, it's, uh, it's not as... I would say it's a more definitive compared to rubies and sapphires. Rubies and sapphires tend to be a bit harder to differentiate in terms of origin. But when you look at emeralds, if you just compare them side by side, it just they just scream out their identity straight away. Okay? So uh yeah, that's about it for my for us today. Thanks for joining us. Uh yeah, come down to the yeah. join us for the next session next week on Felspa. And yeah. uh yeah, come down for our sale. You know, I saw Jessica just join our <laughs> Facebook group. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we, we try to make it as fun as possible. Not like a normal Facebook live, like selling stuff, but really getting everybody to go through this learning process with us. You know, just go through with us. You know, this time, it's time to learn and also appreciate the beauty. Uh, I want to say one last thing. You see that although Emerald is so chaotic, you know, so many messiness and garden, but I tell you, everybody love it. You know, the Spanish went crazy about it and they made a, mon a lot of money with emeralds. So I always relate emeralds to human life, to my life. Sometimes I also feel I'm very messy, but I always get encouragement from my stones. I say, Even though emerald is so messy, uh, people still like, like, so I said, oh God, thank you. <laughs> thank you for making emerald. Emerald makes me feel uh, comforted. All right. So, oh yeah, uh, Andrew, remember this, this stone is, I think you might want to show your girlfriend. This emerald uh, is about uh, 15,000. Okay, so <laughs> you can tell her that the emerald is also worth some kind of money. Okay, not, not, so, not so low. Maybe she thinks the emerald are, are cheap, la, that's why. So this is uh, 15,000. Maybe can... she thinks that emerald is like for old people. Or show, show her this one, uh, this one. This is 200. 200 uh, this one I think will be good. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You bring yeah, her you to go. watch a uh, crazy rich Asian, <laughs> then you use this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Crazy rich yeah. Asian wore, uh, wore uh, what? Uh? The lady, Michelle. Michelle Michelle Yo. Yo. Michelle Yo. Yo. Yeah. You wore a giant. Looks exactly like this. But that one is much smaller. That one is... Yeah. That's like 10 carat. Maybe 10 carat. Ten carat. Yeah. And, and that's I her personal so. one, you know. That is her personal one. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you outdo outdo crazy rich Asian. Yeah. Wow. At a twenty four carats. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Andrew, you're getting a lot of advice now. Yeah, Jessica said, uh, oh, Andrew GF need to see a good piece of emerald <laughs> and a nice piece of setting la. Yeah, it's true. You know. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. No pressure, Andrew. <laughs> I hope she's watching. Is she watching you, Andrew? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget so, uh, to include all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Thank oh. goodness, nothing oh, you, happened. You just dropped. Okay. No, I dropped the bottle, but yeah. not the iPad. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so, we wait for your Zoom Zoom <laughs> invitation. <laughs> Looking forward to Andrew's proposal with Emery on the live. <laughs> Happy life, I know. Uh. <laughs> hey, save a lot of money, you know. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. online proposal know. is much lower cost. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see everybody so supportive, you know. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so now so we know. So it is. Good fun. Yeah. yeah. So thank yeah, you, everybody. Thank you, thank you for much. all the support. Yes. We really appreciate yes. it very much. Uh yeah, continue to follow us and uh yeah. And yeah. we hope to bring you valuable content and yes, and let's stay strong in this COVID crisis and enjoy gemstones. You got hanged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. See you all again next week. So, uh, I hope my introduction not always too long because we always have like new people. So, thank you for your patience, thank you for your understanding and thank you for always joining us. So we see you all next week again. Do remember to sign up on the Eventbrite so that you can get the link. Okay, sign up on Eventbrite. It's already on the Eventbrite. So sign up and then you will get the link for the uh, webinar sessions. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great evening.
Thank you. All right. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao. 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 Good night. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Bye. Bye. Bye.